Hello viewers, my name is Adam. And yeah, I'm Aaron. And this is Sticky Media Productions, bringing you a movie review. So guys, um, we got to go ahead, because we got HBO Max, watch the latest in the Conjuring universe. Of course, we're going to be talking about The Devil Made Me Do It. Which is the third main installment in the Conjuring universe. Well, I liked the first um, Conjuring movie and the second one was fine. Um, I think things kind of blew up for the franchise a lot. Um, it got real big real fast. and you know, It was the first in, of many of uh, what people like to call highbrow horror um, craze and friends. Well, well, let's get this straight. Horror... Now, there's always been highbrow horror. That's true. And I, I personally think that the high, the, the highlight of any all horror, the horror genre comes from the '70s, mm -hmm. because, which is very much what this whole universe of films is highly inspired by, especially with the filmmaking. Well, the, it's like the films themselves is like it, they they jump through different like time frames, um, considering that these are based off of the actual cases that were being conducted by Ed and Lorraine Warren over their long career. Yes, and I feel as though part of the reason why this a series of uh, films has been so successful is because um, I'll say it's, as far as any type of horror is concerned, at least from what how we perceive it to be, it's somewhat soft. Mm-hmm. And as, a, as far as his intent into trying to scare people. And that's been a big problem for me personally as I am a huge horror fan. And I really wish that, you know, these that Hollywood would go back to the days that they really didn't care about whether or not they were going to be scaring a bunch of people. That was the whole game. It's a horror movie. I want to be scared. I want to be able to go back and think about the movie and feel fear and, and straight t terror and dread when I, you know, revisit it. And, I mean, it's not to say that they weren't, you know, decent or really good horror movies that's come out. It's just that I just find it very lackluster these days as they really are playing towards the mass audiences and in that same sense doing it in a way that they're making sure it's not too scary because we can't have people running out and not necessarily feeling comfortable watching the material. What a world to be alive if we were to grow up during when The Exorcist was a huge big deal. <laughs> yeah. I, I would probably laugh myself just no, actually so, seeing people running out of just watch it up there watching people just run out there. Oh my god, I can't watch this the most scary to death. Like, oh, uh, where is that at in Barbie? Filmmaking, but nevertheless, we're um, here to talk about the devil made me do it. All right, so um, the whole big franchise seems to start because James Wan has been a major uh, focus in, uh, of this whole franchise. He uh, he directed the first two mm -hmm. and he produces all the other films, but unfortunately, he did not come back to direct this one as he was able to do like Warner Brothers allowed him to branch off into other things. Um, I Aquaman, mm -hmm. as well as um, I, I believe uh, he has his own original horror film that's coming out later in 2021 that I hope looks good. Yep, this time around he kind of passed the reins over to someone who he has actually been helping out in their own career as they're coming up in the, uh, into the uh, industry. It was the same um, individual who did the um, La La Rona. Uh, the Curse of La La Rona. The, the Curse of La La Rona. The director Michael Chavez, he's brought on to direct this third installment of the main series. And there is some indeed some improvements, at least as far as his directing concern. Mm -hmm. From the story, the conjuring that they made me do it is heavily being based on the actual case. The double made me do it case were revolved around the first time that well at least the first time in modern history that the double was invoked as a legit reason for why someone committed a crime. Uh, rather uh, that was proven successful or not we're not going to spoil it here you can research the, um, the case yourself exactly. or watch this film yeah. um, but as far as the pitch was concerned um, it was supposed to be different from from past Conjure Universe films because yeah. they were highly like, people were wondering if this was going to be a mix between Seven and the, what they did previously because it's supposed to be from what, we, what was perceived to be as a police procedural with some supernatural. Yeah, this is instead of the rap, the past few, few attempts in which it was very much a haunted house um, 
uh, series that was you know, going on particular cases that dealt with a family and a particular curse that they did uh, that they invoked upon when they went into a new home and then they had to uh, call on the on the warrants to come back in and try and help them out. This is a case in which the warrants were taken on after it was involved with another case and having to involve themselves yet again because this is uh, trying to save instead of just trying to exercise. Um, demons and, 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 and spirits out of the house, they had to um, try and save the soul and potentially the legal <laughs> battles that was going to follow. It was a very murky situation. Mm -hmm. One that uh, I don't feel as though the film successfully executed mm -hmm. uh, since. Um, so much of this film relies heavily on the supernatural aspects to that case mm -hmm. that they failed to do uh, ground the story in that human element that uh, was the reason why some like uh, at least some of the more successful uh, films in the franchise were able to do to a degree even yeah. if this ordinary horror films as well very much so and yet again I found myself a little bit kind of taken back as with the um, whether or not this is something that Ed and Lorraine Warren necessarily um, was wholly about this will be in this particular franchise is really hammers home the, the idea of you know bad witchcraft and then bad uh, 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 elements and, and to those aspects and then personally for me I'm just like I'm not really all that crazy about that because I do practice and I'm like uh, I got my, I had my own biases on that one, but then when I look at it for just like the movie um, aspects, uh, uh, you know, you know, point of view, it's it, it definitely looked interesting. It have it definitely had unique and interesting moments. It feels though a lot of those interesting moments though were a little bit uh, spoiled because of the marketing itself, and it's probably because of how many movie, uh, um, particular um, trailers they may have came out for that. But this, and, and then. But I feel as though those those cool effects they had, or those cool scenes they might um, um, had sprinkled off the movie, just wasn't enough to necessarily save it in my eyes as far as being a re an outstanding flick. Now the characters, the like this being the main um, film, this trilogy, uh, well, this series, the Conjuring universe, we always follow um, the Ed and Lorraine Warren, mm -hmm. two real life couples of paranormal investigators. Who have been able to uh, like the earliest uh, forms of uh, that profession? Mm -hmm. And basically, they're the reason why the, the whole why we have so many uh, HD like uh, Discovery Plus paranormal shows as it is. Yeah, they're, they're, well, they really <laughs> blown. And it, that in itself has blown up for. And, and I just can't. I'm amazed because that's type of, that's the type of stuff that I usually watch when I was a kid. All the you know, Ghost Files and stuff like that, Ghost Hunters, or you know. Those you still do. I, I still do. I, I love it. I, but you know, I, I can't go to like Travel Channel or Discovery Channel or God forbid the History Channel without come running into something that has to do about the paranormal. So that stuff really just blew out. I know. Um, but bringing these characters to life um, throughout this franchise has been Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga, yeah. uh, two actors who <laughs> like looks like they had to wait very long in their careers to finally get into a major. Um, profiles as what they are. Um, and they really do have yeah. to thank, you know, James Wan for the series because it really does, this is their, very much their series. They yes. they are the backbone for it. And you really do feel for the relationship that they built with one another throughout these um, franchise. Um, but <laughs> this is like, unfortunately enough, I feel as though the characters that, um, the side characters that populate the actual investigations themselves, mm -hmm. Still, I feel as though um, they get the short end of the stick. Most because it's almost entirely it always focuses itself right back with the warrants, and I feel as though if they actually had it sold on and actually ran with the point of doing this movie based off of something like Seven or something else that had to deal with the legal uh, legalities of this case, you would have gained, you know went a little bit deeper into their personal background and history and what they bring it into each in, in this particular case. And I feel as though that was the area where they needed to go, but they didn't choose to go that route. Part of what makes good horror is to actually fleshing out those characters. Because mm -hmm. without the, you caring about the characters and their stakes, like, you really don't really have much of a horror film or just a story in general. Why do you care? I mean, if you're not caring about who's going to get killed or who's going to be you know, oppressed or in danger, there's nothing really sinking you in to feel like you're scared for them. Yeah. 
But one thing that this movie does have going for it and that it shows is its production. Yeah. The Michael Chavez is a very much um, an improvement from his early outing. And in fact, it's the best looking of all the Conjuring films to date. It really is. Um, you know, like we mentioned um, earlier in this review about the being inspired by the 1970s type of filmmaking. This one incorporates a lot more modern tech, like elements into the cinematography as well as boosting up some visual flair, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to um, highlighting Vera Farmiga's um, Lorraine's character and what she's... Uh, what and her she's abilities. Doing. Like The way that they really push her psychic abilities in this film is something to really behold and I really do enjoy it. And I liked all those scenes where they actually really put her in the framework on how she's um, investigating the case itself. But, uh, <laughs> like, uh, it, the, most of the part that, that is mainly just a fact Mm -hmm. Not so much of enhancing the scares. Exactly. Because, like, like all the films, they do rely heavily on jump scares, and to like, almost a detriment, like to the point. And still, to still um, throw this franchise in this film, it's, it's so weak. <laughs> as it's far predictable. As how they That's the problem. A lot of these films scares, and a lot of the, the story trumps and the developments is just too predictable. You mm -hmm. see it coming well before the characters do, and you're like. Really, you fell for that. Really, mm -hmm. that's where you're at. Yes. And no amount of, of sound effects or cutting out the music when there is some in there is going to help you. Nope. It's just, it's executed very on repeat and a very repetitive process. Exactly. Like earlier films did it, like, did somewhat did it better, but the thing is, there's only so much you can do um, to try and drag out a jump scare. Again, they never got past that whole clap moment from the first film. No, they did not. <laughs> um, I think, well, unfortunately enough, this film is not doing trilogies any favor as being the main, um, end of being the third main entry into the series. The third one, it looks like, is the dud. Yeah, it's, so far anyway. It's still hard to, you know, to jump over that third movie hurdle, and it, it proves that you just got you got to put forth the extra effort to make that happen. And it just so happens that The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, just couldn't push it. So, overall, we are giving this an okay review. Yeah, that's just all you can do for it. But, um, guys, as always, if you like this review, please like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications on more videos that we got coming for you. As always, we'd like to hear from you guys. Please comment below. Did you watch The Conjuring Made Me Do It? How do you feel about The Conjuring Universe? Do you have a favorite movie? Um, is, is there something you want to look forward to or you would like them to push a little bit further into the next installment? As always, I'm Aaron. I'm Adam. And this has been Seeking Media Productions. See you later. Bye.